So neuromodulation is using a device that uses a current or magnet to modulate or change brain activity. There are several different neuromodulation devices available at the moment, either um, available for clinical use or currently being trialed, and they're working on different, different nerves, different peripheral nerves to see if we can use them to affect migraine. There are superorbital stimulators, uh, transcranial magnetic stimulators that you apply to the back of your head. Um, there's a vagus nerve stimulator in the neck and several others as well. That device, it's, a, it's an easy handheld device. It's currently FDA approved for the acute treatment of migraine with Aura and has also been shown to be helpful in reducing migraine frequency. And it's very easy to use. Um, you know, you turn it on, you put it behind your head, you push a button, and it generates a magnetic impulse, which is supposed to change the electrical, you know, connections within the brain and therefore modulate migraine. It's a nice option when patients either can't or don't want to use medications. So the one you use on your neck is the is the vagus nerve stimulator. It's a non-invasive handheld tool that's, um, that's currently FDA approved for the as-needed treatment of episodic cluster headache. Um, it may also be helpful for migraine. There's some new data that's coming out at the moment in that, in that regard as well. And then there's also a supraorbital uh, transcutaneous stimulator, which was the brand name is called the Cephaly device. It's the only one available. You stick it on your forehead, you push a button, you let it run for about 20 minutes. Uh, that device has been shown um, to possibly be helpful in reducing migraine frequency, and it's currently FDA approved for the prevention of episodic migraine. So there are new devices currently in clinical trials. Um, there's a, a caloric vestibular stimulator, which is, looks like a pair of headphones you stick in on your head. There's a probe that goes in your ears. Um, it's supposed to work on that nerve. And there are several others also in clinical trials too that work on either occipital nerves or suborbital nerves. And you know, there's, a, there's a, a relatively long list of things that people are looking at at the moment. They're not yet clinically available you know, for patients to obtain. And these devices can be pretty expensive, even the ones that are FDA approved, because insurance companies don't always uh, pay for them. So I think it's a little difficult to know when to recommend um, you know, neuromodulation versus a, a, an oral medication or something, because there is a cost factor that has to be considered. We need to develop them, but we also need to make them accessible to patients. And that will take insurance coverage, that will take you know, talking with um, insurance companies that will talk, you know, take uh, talking with the companies to bring down the cost. I think we need to make them more accessible, uh, and that will help to generate, you know, more interest in developing more devices too. I am very hopeful. I think uh, patients really want something like this. The currently available migraine and cluster medications that we have are not great. They have a lot of side effects with them, and. They're not easy to take, and if you can come up with something that's better tolerated but just as effective um, and is, you know, not technically a medication in the sense, I think there's a lot of appeal for something like that. So there is interest. I think we need to just, you know, think about what we're trying to achieve and the cost of, of doing that.